exclusive content. <laughs> <laughs> so we asked our VIP group what questions they want answered, and here are their questions. You read the first one. Mm -hmm. What is the optimum time period to train? Hmm. I would say. There's no real optimum time period, like a lot of people think, oh, I have to do 45 minutes, I have to do 60 minutes. A lot of it's going to come down to intensity, because so if you're just spinning your wheels for 60 minutes, then it's a waste of time. Yeah, a lot of people will say things like, oh, I do six 60 minute sessions a week. If I do three spin classes back to back. Yeah, then that's not a very good barometer of progression, because ultimately you need to be looking to progress week on week, month on month, year on year. So if the only way you can progress it by time, then you're just going to do more and more and more and more and more. Obviously, the more you do, then the lower the intensity is going to be. So, it just depends on how much time you've got, really. So, just fit in. You know, make sure your training is optimal for the time period that you've got. So, focus on. It just depends on your goals massively as well. But just make sure that it's specific to what you're looking to achieve. You know, if your goal is to enjoy your training and do whatever you like, do what you enjoy doing. You know, but if you are dead focused on getting to a goal, then you need to be prioritizing. Progressive strength training, hit work, and then cardiovascular, like lower intensity work after that. Yeah, you exercise to get sweaty and you train for a purpose. Well, okay. <laughs> so there's no real kind of magic time. It depends on what you do, what your goal is, what you kind of train as well. So, you know, you could have a super intense, highly productive 20 minute workout, um, or you could have kind of like, well, I'm just filling the time. It's 45 minutes, and I've got 15 minutes left. I'll just. Uh, I'll just do some planks. So not not really. So it's not like your body registers that you do sixty minutes and then it's like right. I will give you results. So yeah, don't worry about time. Worry about the intensity and the program that you're using. Yeah, the progression of that program. So having something like a logbook where you track what you're doing, you try to gradually progress. Everything is so important. There are people who when they send their training plans across to me, first of all, and it just says three times ten this weight, three times ten this weight, three times ten this weight. If you're hitting tens on every single exercise and your target's a ten and you're achieving your target, you need to make it harder and progress it. Otherwise, you know, you might feel heavy, but you never know what you can do on a heavier weight. So you have to give it a go. And then if you, if you get six, at least next time you've got a target to beat something to work towards. Yeah, try and get seven or eight. Yeah, look at reps as a target, almost as too much. If you, get to, ten, if you get to ten, it's too, the weight's too light. And then the other option with that is when you're you start next week. Don't just do the first, don't wait till your last set to move the weight up. Warm up properly, then lift heavier. It's so, so key. It's really the biggest mistake you see with training. It's people asking for different plans or you know, looking at the, the peripheral details, how long to train for, and actually just not training hard enough in the time they've got you much better served. You know, even if you went in and you did one set of deadlifts and it was heavier than last week, that's more progression than 99% of the gym people will make. That probably sounds, oh, a bit harsh. Yeah, it probably sounds a bit harsh, but it's dead true. People don't look at kind of the long game and making progressions over like a longer period of time. So, okay, next question. Best way to get back strength. This was post injury, so someone's worried about getting back their strength that they've lost after a layoff. Oh, I read that. That's how can I get strength no, in my is, back? This is coming back from uh, an injury. So I'd say I'll always be uh, careful and kind of look to gain momentum. You're not going to go straight back in. Um, to lifting the weights that you were lifting or training the intensity that you were. So take a couple of steps back and then gain that momentum. You gotta get your nervous system fired up and your body running the movements and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, interesting one that. So uh, whilst the question's about injury, I'm trying to get my strength back from just not training because we're busy. Um, it's amazing how James mentions your nervous system, how slow you are when you first start lifting again. So whilst I can lift the weights, I'm just aware of how slow I move and my body's just not used to it. So. I think people get so frustrated and they say, oh, I used to be so much stronger. And, but the problem you've got is if you go back to lifting the weights you've just lifted, you get injured again. So then, you know, rather than gaining a kilo of strength a week, people are going up 10 kilos a week and then getting injured, having six months off and coming back and doing the same thing again, the same thing again, the same thing again. And it's just ridiculous because you're not getting anywhere. Yeah, like we, we mentioned spinning your wheels, people are trying to, to add, you know, 20, 30 kilos to their lifts every month. Well. Yeah, don't you do it. Don't be in a rush. You'd be the world's strongest man next week, and all it's not going to happen. So, yeah, just take the time. Don't gradually, do gradually increase your calories. So if you find you're not getting stronger, then you need to eat more. Uh, and that's one of the 
issues when it comes to fat loss is that people often want to get stronger, they want to get faster, they want to get leaner, they want to get fitter, Build muscle tone. Yeah, but it's not going to happen because you have different energy bands for what you're, you know, for different goals. So if you're looking to get stronger, then you need to be giving your body more fuel. So yeah, add more calories if your goal is strength. And just be aware that your body, you know, will get back to that point. People get so frustrated in their like first week back and then the next week they load stronger, the week after that they load stronger. Have that patience and you'll get there. Strength is just skill work, so the more you practice it, the better you get it. So it's the same thing if you do uh, golf, tennis, ping pong. If you don't do it for a long time, then you're going to get worse at it, you go back and you're not as good because your body has kind of forgotten how to do the movement. So everything's just skill work, you just need to practice, practice, practice. Next question. Uh, James went up nicely, it just says, B B C A A B C A A <laughs> branch chain amino acids. Um, so another uh, supplement that people will take or feel the need to take. Do they need to take it? Is it necessary? <laughs> so stack with the order, can you? Necessary. <laughs> what was the question? It's just branch chain amino acids. I can't remember. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> branch chain amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So, for example. The fireplace <laughs> would be protein. The bricks would be the branch chain amino acids. So that's how the kind of the wall is built. Is how the branch chain <laughs> amino acids <laughs> are put together. So many people will take these kind of during the workout, pre-workout. Um, they're quite well. No, they're not expensive either. No, really cheap. But are but they necessary? Mm, mm, not mm. particularly. You know, could you get away with having a shake before you trained? Yes. Yes. Yeah, same yeah. thing. A decent meal. Yes. It's just a convenience thing. Yeah. Hundred percent. So if you are, it just depends what level you're at, doesn't it? I mean, I my one experience taking BCAA, BCAAs was when I was doing fasted cardio in the morning, uh, which we'll get on to in a minute because that is question number five. Uh, Key beans. Fourth. So I drank BCAAs when I was doing my fasted cardio, just because when you're doing any kind of energy work, whether it be hit or just lists, so whether that's you know. Uh, it's for work, you're working for a period of time and resting, or you're just doing steady state work, so you're working at a set speed for a certain amount of time. Your body will take energy from everywhere. So giving your body extra protein sources, so the BCAAs, means that your body then won't have to go into your muscle stores. So you're just doing it to protect your muscle mass, you know, for whatever it costs, costed me 30p, 50p for, for that workout, it was worth it for me in that, in that sacrifice. So if you want to spend your money on these things, and you can do, there's no substitute for, uh, you know, a bad diet. Prevention is cheaper than the cure. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Like Joseph, if you work out fasting, which we've we'll, we'll got to move on to, like I say, is you can kind of rob your your muscle uh, from the protein. If you've got nothing going on, so your body will burn like protein, carbs, and fats. So it's just giving it a source of protein to burn. Yeah. To burn. I said with that. Warm up the time. How long? How long? If I was going to do a warm up, depending on, <laughs> <laughs> on what you were doing, so you need to look at uh, a bit of mobilization, so getting the joints moving, uh, getting sign over with fluids moving, producing. Thank you, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, some dynamic flexibility, so moving around, because obviously, kind of if you're lifting weights, you're running, it's a dynamic movement, so static stretching kind of has its place, but it tends to be more towards the end of your workout. Um, and then a bit of a pulse raiser to get your heart but then kind of doing the flexibility, uh, the dynamic movements and all that kind of, kind of raise your heart rate. So it's not like you have to go on the cross trainer for five minutes. That'll get your core temperature up, but you need to get your kind of joints, uh, your muscles, your range of motion going and then always do, if you're lifting weights, do a few light sets as well just to prime the nervous system that we've already touched on. Yeah, so just to take that a little bit deeper, uh, if you've got basically you down, uh, if you've got overactive tissue, so if you've got tight hips, then you'd look to foam roll your hips first and maybe stretch them off. So one of the big problems people have, or if people are trying to work their glutes, which is quite common for a lot of people, lazy ass. If you've got really tight hips, that will basically inhibit your glutes. So if you roll your hips first, stretch your hips, that then means you can then activate your glutes better when you do other lifts or when you when you're warm up. I think the most important thing about that is to. You know, the question is, is how long should you warm up for? As long as you've got time for. Yeah. There's no, you know, the number of people who don't do any warm up is massive, and it 
is just going to have such a, such an impact in regards to you know the, the comfort you have when you lift your form, injury prevention, you know getting stronger, it, working the right muscles that you want to yeah, work. Yeah, activating the right muscles. Like Joe was saying there, if you've got like, tight hips, you you have. Uh, if certain muscles aren't working properly like the glutes because your hips are tight, then other muscles will take over and it's usually kind of lower back of the hamstrings. Synergistic dominance. Mm. Nice, I like saying that. It works. Yeah. yeah. So kind of getting yourself moving right will be massively beneficial and cross over to your workouts and your results. Yeah, yeah. So just make sure it's specifically that's the most important part of that. As you see, like James says, I'm going to do five weeks in the cross train. Why? What, what, what's the, the purpose of this? You know, it's just people just are used to you see your old school PE, isn't it? Like go around the field. Well, why? Yeah, do <laughs> What's actually doing? So it's quite, it's very specific to what you're doing. Um, we may even cover this on, I don't know, perhaps an away day. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh so yeah, that's, that would probably be the most, the most obvious uh, way to learn more, is because you know, there's something you kind of have to be shown in person. It's quite hard to do. You. Yeah. Uh, Next question. Fasted cardio. I don't really question more of a two word statement. Well, I think. You know, fasted cardio, is it necessary? Is it beneficial? Is it better than eat some cardio? <laughs> <laughs> eat some cardio, I'm <laughs> more that. Eat some mess cardio? Um, fasted cardio, benefits? No. Uh, I think the kind of myth is because you've not eaten any food, you tap straight into fat stores, or this whole kind of, once you've trained for 20 minutes precisely, then you are in your fat starts because no way glycogen can last longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> you ought to be Yeah, no, I'm not with that. It's late at night. Um, yeah, so fast and cardio is up to you. It's not something we say you have to do. Um, it's some people like to train early mornings, some people don't like to eat before they train early mornings. So if you're one of those people, then I say go for it. If it suits your day, yeah. then definitely do it. Fasted hit isn't the best idea. Yeah. Or don't people really fasted uh, overnight, so in the mornings when you're cold. Yeah, fasted is kind of not um, two hours between meals, that's not fasted. Yeah, you might feel like a fast, I appreciate the pain. But yeah, if you are doing hits in the mornings, then you should have something before because your cortisol levels will be higher, hit you more like stress down muscle. muscle. So yeah, you're just going to stress your body out more than you need to. So if you're already quite stressed, which most people are as a rule, then you know doing fasted hit isn't a, a great idea. Does it burn more fat? I think the studies say it's like absolutely tiny margins that you burn more fat. But the issue then is that you then eat more later in the day because you've done energy work without anything in your systems. Your body's going to make you want to eat more. Yeah, your body's very late in the day. Fat. Yeah, and so, wants to survive. So yeah, if it fits your day, by all means do it. So you know we often hark back to when we did our strict diet about 400 million years ago now and when I was yeah I did, <laughs> I did an hour of fasting cardio in the morning started at half an hour went to an hour because it fit my day because I didn't want to do the cardio after I've done my weight session or after I've done my sprints so it just fitted my, into my day quite nicely so that was the reason I did it not for any you know physiological benefits yeah so if you feel <laughs> <laughs> if you feel good doing it, then go for it. If you're waking up and you're starving, you really want to eat, but you're forcing yourself to do fasting cardio, stop it. Stop it! Stop it. Do you have to exercise before eating your carbon? Me personally? Yes, you. No. <laughs> you don't have to. There's no, you know, what is going to happen if you eat carbs without. No, it causes an instant response, and you'll instantly gain fat. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not gonna happen. You gotta look at your kind of your overall day. If you're overeating on foods, then you'll probably gain fat. It's not gonna come down to your body's not gonna process it necessarily in a different way. This is one of those kind of throwbacks to different programs. Yeah. Just kind of insist on having certain protocols that are kind of nonsensical, like putting a gas syrup in a fucking protein <laughs> for refueling. Um, no. <laughs> just no. Yeah. Um, Again, you're getting down to very kind of minute details. Exactly, yeah. So your body will use carbohydrates better after a training session because your body will have depleted glycogen stores and burnt carbs. I don't know why I did that. Just because <laughs> no one knows what it means. But your body's burnt carbs, so then your body will be able to use them better. They're more likely to be stored. But like James says, the, the driver behind fat loss or fat gain is how many calories you take in. Ultimately, calories are going to be king. Yeah, so if you have you know, 400 grams of oats after a workout, that's your, your issues, not the timing. The issue is how much you're taking in. You know, if you have a small portion in the morning, it works really well for you. 
And by all means do that, but just be aware that at some point during a fat loss phase, if you're taking it further and further, your calories are going to have to come down. It's easiest to take from fats and carbs. You know, you want to keep your protein intake high. Your body needs fats, so it's more than likely going to come from carbs at some point. If it's going to benefit you more by having your carbs post-workout, what I mean by that is you're going to maintain more muscle mass by doing that, then don't cut those carbs. Keep your carbs post-workout. So if, you, if you don't have much room in your diet for carbs, having them post-workout is a good idea. Is it the be on end or no? So as always, people often say, with nutrition, they kind of think, oh, you know, everyone in nutrition, our arms have different things. There's so many contrasting opinions. You've got to listen to what we said. Everyone will agree, near enough, that calories are the biggest driver in fat loss. So keep that in mind when you're making your decisions. Just be aware that you know, your body will use carbs like that after a session. Yeah. Happy with that? But it's not oh, necessary. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this question. What is the best way to measure body fat? Dexter scan. Yeah. So lots of like people will use electrical impedance, so the scales where you step on them and then it goes and then spits out a number. Um so what yeah, I started a stutter there. Yeah, that's about as beatboxing. <laughs> um it's sending an electrical pulse around your body and then it's measuring how fast it comes back to try and figure out how much muscle mass you have compared to body fat. Um so these are highly unreliable. Um you know I've had a few clients that have had mini meltdowns on these. <coughs> Carry on. Um, it's good to depend on your hydration levels, all sorts of different stuff. So they can't be, they can't be trusted. Yeah, so I would always ask you, what's the best way for me to measure my body fat? I'd always say, why? What are you, yeah, what, are you what, what, what number are you looking for? So people want to know their body fat because they want to know they're progressing. So is using a machine that costs £10 or even if it costs £1,000, is that the best way? to truly gauge if you're making progress or not. Not really. I said no. No, I don't think so either. You know, we've worked uh, at a gym before where there was a really expensive set. And I remember, you know, James was saying, the client had a meltdown, I had a meltdown doing it once as well. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting on one week and it said my muscle had gone down by a kilo, my fat had gone up by a kilo. And even though I knew the most likely scenario was that this was absolute crap, it still knocks your confidence. And then the next week it just come back to being normal. So my fat kind of came up and then came back down. So what does it matter? That has absolutely no difference. So I was doing all the right things, I was eating the right foods, I was gradually reducing my calories, I was training hard. If I take the photos, they're only a week apart, so I wouldn't have seen much difference anyway. So you, you're kind of looking at the wrong things and I think that ultimately you need to have a structured plan in place so that when you do properly plateau, you can make a change. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong because they don't want to have that structure. So then you want to be aware that your progress is going to be slightly harder to to measure, to tweak, yeah, exactly. You need to, you need to track things, so tracking your food, tracking your training. So if you're getting stronger and your food is consistently good, then how all of a sudden are you going to gain two, three yeah. percent body fat? Like, say, you look in the mirror, what, what is more important to you? You walking around and telling everyone that you're 20 percent body fat, are you looking really fucking good? Yeah, I think that's the which, which one do you want? The interesting thing, isn't it, is that people will say, Oh, I'm 10 I'm percent, I'm six percent, I'm 15 percent. But no one gives a shit. No one's really that interested. You know, if, if I said to you now, I'm 15% or I said I'm 6%, it makes no difference. It's yeah. just a number. You just, you're doing it for a look. If people are that interested in body fat, it's not, it's very unlikely to be out of a health reason. It's an aesthetic reason. So what really matters yeah. is we got your top off. You're not going to look at someone and think you're like, oh, I don't think I really like how they look. Excuse me, what percentage body fat? I'm 12%. Oh, actually, no, I do like how you look. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It has no difference. Obviously, so, there's going to be health issues if you're over certain percentages, but then, you know, how, <laughs> how are you measuring them? Yeah, I wonder, um, how are you measuring that? So, yeah, yeah. there's no <laughs> there's no.